Here is uh, Adam Schiff on uh, Dana Bash's show. Asked whether he thinks that um, Clarence Thomas should resign if it's found that his wife, Ginny, was involved in plans to overturn the 2020 election. Uh, It's amazing to me that this guy is going to sit on any case or has in the past that involves this election. It's just amazing. But understand, there is no conflict of interest rules about the Supreme Court. I was about to say, like, there's no mechanism for it. So, I mean, can he even be, uh, unless the Democrats make a massive stink about it, there's no recourse option uh, internally, right? Theoretically, you could impeach uh, Clarence Thomas. There is no rule, but there's no rules that you cannot have a conflict of interest and no rules that you cannot be seen to have a uh, conflict of interest. Good thing that these people have lifetime appointments. What an ins- what a, a beautiful, heralded, incredible institution that does not even have internal conflict of interest rules. Huh. There's Schiff. I, I think the committee will be interested, among other things, whether this was discussed with Justice Thomas, given that he was ruling on cases impacting whether we would get some of this information. If you find the answer to that question is yes, do you agree with some of your Democratic colleagues like Ilhan Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that Justice Thomas should resign or perhaps should be impeached? Well, I, I think that at a minimum uh, it suggests, and, and I think we know enough to say this already, that Justice Thomas, to avoid even the appearance of impropriety, should have nothing to do with any cases relating to January 6th, uh, particularly regarding our investigation. Um, because, you know, we want our justices to uphold a standard that goes beyond what's lawful or unlawful to avoiding even the appearance of a conflict or impropriety. All right, so let's be clear. Clarence Thomas's wife is a paid activist. She's a professional, professional activist, arguing that these elections stolen, not just arguing, lobbying multiple dozens of lawmakers in multiple states, right? I mean, I think in Arizona, Arizona it, it was like, almost two like dozen. 30 or something. It was a lot. And, and no reason to believe that she didn't do this in other states as well. She is, her husband is ruling on whether the, the committee should get information, could literally be information about her. Um, and... Then Justice Sotomayor gets up and makes this speech. Where is she? She's speaking at the uh, American Constitution Society. She's at the American Constitution Society. Uh, here she is. But I suspect I have probably disagreed with him more than. Okay, pause any it for a second. Else. I'm sorry. This is about. He's. T- she's talking about uh, Clarence Thomas and um, making an argument about. How, what a great guy he is. <laughs> yeah. But I suspect I have probably disagreed with him more than with any other justice. That we have not joined each other's opinions more than anybody else. And yet, Justice Thomas is the one justice in the building that literally knows every employee's name that they every one of them and not only does he know their names he remembers their families names and no way it's histories he's the first one who will go up to someone when you're walking with him and say is your son okay how's your daughter doing in college he's the first one that when my stepfather died sent me flowers in florida he is a man who keeps, cares deeply about the court as an institution, about the people who work there, but about people. He has a different vision than I do. It's okay. Still going, okay. About how to help people and about their responsibilities to help themselves. I've often said to people, Justice Thomas believes that every person can pull themselves up by their bootstraps. I believe 
that some people can't get to their bootstraps without help. They need someone to help them lift their foot up so they can reach those bootstraps. That's a very different philosophy of life. But I think we share a common understanding. All right. First off, he's also, he is in the Supreme Court. He is also the first one to go up and say, excuse me, is this your pubic hair on my Coke can? Oh. And he never gets credit for that. Never, it's so perceptive. Never gets credit for making sure that people's pubic hair are not on their soda cans. He's so perspe perceptive. Um, he could see the pubic hair from across the room. The, I, I, the Hearing that is so upsetting. Uh, by uh, Sonia Sotomayor. I, now, I guess if I was to get a secret letter and someone says, you know, Sam, been a longtime fan, watch you and Emma every day. Um, this is Judge Sotomayor writing this. Just wanted you to know, please don't mention this to anybody. If you're going to read this uh, on your email, don't, don't say my name. Uh, but I had to go out and say that because I'm negotiating right now with Thomas about, uh, you know, trying to save, uh, you know, uh, abortion rights or, you know, to, uh, allow for the EPA to exist and the FDA to exist. And so just give me a little slack. All right. Believe me, I didn't believe any of that stuff about the bootstrap stuff was crap, too. Yeah, but all that part where I was talking to you as if I was talking to a room full of like kindergartners. Yeah. About the bootstrap. Just know that just know that <clears throat> that was that was it. Aside from that. Who cares? Let's say I let's say he never said that thing about the pubic hair on the Coke can. Let's say that he didn't sexually harass. Let's say if he never brought up brought up uh, the pornographic performer Long Dong Silver. Yeah, let's just pretend none of that happened. Okay? Even though there was corroborating um, witnesses, or I should say uh, to his sort of... Um, sexual uh you know innuendo with 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 people um i don't know if you can call that innuendo um with other women his in, harassment in of harassment. anita hill uh, which was unconscionable and let's just assume like the the idea that it matters that he's a nice guy around the office when you are talking about one of the nine most powerful people in the in fact let's be honest one of the six, one of six of the most powerful people in the country in terms of de determining the lives of tens of 30 of, of hundreds of millions of people. And frankly, if you want to talk about, you know, EPA's ability to um, control climate change, billions of people, I don't give a shit if he doesn't know the name of the guy who works at uh, the uh, bodega in the Supreme Court. It, I, do I think it's nice? That's great. It's a wholly irrelevant. And when you talk about, you know, the, the institution, the, uh, the enormous, at least, perspective that it looks like he's involved with a massive conflict of interest is also enough. It is, it's so grotesque. And, and then on top of that, the bootstraps thing, look it up. That was satire. When, when someone first wrote, people should pull themselves up by their bootstraps, that was satire. Why? Because it's not possible to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It is not humanly possible. If you are in your boots, you cannot lift yourself up by your bootstraps. It is physically impossible. It is satire. It is satire. That is a window into the mind of the Supreme Court justices in terms of how they perceive themselves. And they're so detached. There's so many different layers of judicial philosophy and hypotheticals and personal narcissism about one's own approach that take precedent over the actual tangible consequences of their decisions. I don't really need to hear about someone's personality. 
I don't care if Sonia Sotomayor is the nicest person in the world. I don't care if Joe Biden is the nicest or the meanest person in the world. I don't care if Nancy, like none of these, none of those things matter. It is the job that you do for people. And so, I mean, like that, that really is unfortunately kind of the the way that justices view themselves and it's reinforced by the fetishization of that institution they see themselves as priests with different approaches it's like you know i'm a i'm a i'm a power running back or i'm an elusive running back we both play the game but we do it in different styles doesn't matter i'm speedy i'm powerful but we we're all just trying to get to the same place Uh, and and it's just that's not true it's not true it's not true and like This is why I can't stand the heralding of this institution in any context. Because it's all just bullshit. It really is. And it only just serves the the, the mythologizing of people who just care about power. And even Sonia Sotomayor, who's ostensibly one of the good ones and is going to rule the right way in many cases, has bought into that. Has bought into that shit. Um, I just don't know how you talk to a room full of adults like that at that level of just it's so condescending bullshit. it's, it's, it's un- and i think they don't even know that they're being condescending they think, no oh, not at all they think they're yeah. being like not enlightening and it's crazy i'm helping all of you understand you know when somebody doesn't share their toys well clarence he will share his toys under the right conditions sometimes can i, can I just add the last thing that she said also she basically said this is why I, so the, I want to explain to you like why i can be friends with him and then you know when she said it kind of like comically continue our daily battle the whole audience the american constitution society laughs at that and might that might be professional privilege oh she's a supreme court justice or everyone is in hoc to the same institutional I- malaise and like brainwashing yeah. that goes on here they're like oh we have to laugh it's funny that they're collegial with one another like you know no, they love it they, but old clarence thomas no, because it, enforces, <laughs> it reinforces their belief in this in this religious belief in this institution that everybody else if they're paying attention can see is just protecting capital and oftentimes I, 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 in our current moment actively taking away people's rights and yet we're supposed to like in the hallowed halls of the american constitution society be like oh <laughs> oh god they're f- forming the, they're they're a part of this amazing uh, democratic institution they're the vanguard against uh, the all of everything falling apart ex- except they're accelerating it <laughs> and her attitude towards it and everyone else in that room their attitude is accelerating it. we're, we're going to talk more about this with jamel Bowie, i think on uh on, on friday because i think this is well like, i'm getting sort of, it out now because i won't be there uh, exactly <laughs> yeah. but 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 the uh, and so at the risk of repeating myself and i think it, maybe this came up with either perrine or or, or or digby but there is this sense of like it's all going to work out yeah everything's going to work out history is going to work out there's it's all don't worry it's all going forward we're a uh, progress is unavoidable happily ever and, after. and the important thing is just we want to be in good shape when we get to the other side and that is a an incorrect <laughs> incomplete reading of history it's a coping mechanism um mm-hmm. well i don't i i think it's actually just a genuine belief because you've got these people who grew up you know with uh you know the the the, the war in court and sort of like uh, f- 50 years of of democratic uh control over the house more or less and all of these different things and, you know, uh, watching progress and people, you know, in the 50s, uh, you know, black people couldn't drink at the same uh, water fountain as white people. And 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 there is there is some progress that uh, is, uh, you know, undeniable. But that doesn't mean that things can't go backwards. And that doesn't mean that things can't go sideways in such a way that a lot of other things go backwards and just stay backwards. And it is a fundamental uh, uh, misunderstanding about the way that history works. It's a fundamental misunderstanding to not understand that, like, this country's not that old. It really isn't. It's erasure. It's erasure of activists, often black, brown, indigenous, et cetera, et cetera. 
And and it was, you know, what, what we were talking about uh, earlier in, in our discussion about Juneteenth. Um, and then the people who are in power during those time periods are the ones that get mythologized in history. And like Supreme Court justices are, it's the kind of the same thing, too. They end up at, at one point ruling the right way on Brown v. Board, and it's that court. Oh, thank you! Not the activists and the blood and the sweat well, that led to that time period. And then we pretend it was always going to happen all along this way. Because the people on the ground don't get the credit. It's, a, it's also an erasure of, you know, Nazis, uh, yeah. Dark Ages. I mean, like, we go on and on. And um, it doesn't necessarily always have to get better. It can get worse. We're seeing it right now. Yeah. It's getting worse. Oh, that also, that speech is so tone deaf. In the middle of them rolling back Roe v. Wade. We're going to talk about how it's a game between, like, the nice guy. Like, th this is friends. <laughs> we're on Cheers. Right. You know? He's just... Uh, he's the goofy he's silly, one. Silly, right. And we're the, the practical one, and that's it. And I'm Chandler. He's Joey. I mean, we, we live together, but we don't always get along. At the end of the... At the end of... Uh, when we do that finale, at the end of five or seven seasons, we're all going to hug and realize how important we were to each other's lives. Uh, oh!